Well, I remember I had uh, Sebastian Telfair on my show recently. Mm-hmm. And he talked about how he was, uh, I guess, in the gym with Kobe one day. Mm-hmm. And Kobe walked up to him and said, you know why you can't guard me? You came here on a bus. I came here on a helicopter. You lift and weights. Okay. And Kobe, like, you, you can't, I never started a conversation with him. That's so funny. He just came over there. So I guess that was so much problem. <laughs> you got to wait till him come to you. <laughs> but um, Kobe is like, man, you know how I know y'all can't guard me? So I'm like, how you know we can't guard you? He said, when the ball come in and it come hit my hand, I know y'all got here on a bus. I said, like, you know, every team comes on a bus. You could leave from the hotel. Every right. team, no matter who it is, he's on a bus. He said, I got here on a helicopter. Hmm. I just got off a helicopter. You got off a bus. I'm, I'm, it's a bucket. And I'm sitting there just stuck like, I remember sharing that story with KD and Westbrook. I remember KD looking at me like, I'm about to go ask Kobe, <laughs> did he say this? And I'm sure he probably got an opportunity to ask him. But yeah, definitely, uh, shout out to Kobe, man. That's that's like, that's a legacy we're going to miss. That's what he said to him. That's what he said to him. True story. Who? Hmm. You know, notwithstanding what ultimately happened to him, but it was, you know, people like to deify certain people, especially when they pass young, yeah. but Kobe was not a nice guy to everybody. He was not generous and pleasant and everything mm-hmm. else like that. He would do, you know, like the situation with you, the situation with Sebastian, like mm-hmm. he would do things where, you know, he would get under people's skin in a way. Yeah. Um, and when you said that Kobe wanted you to fall in line and you never really fell in line. I said that? Well, I did? Okay. <laughs> um, I don't think. I wasn't a fan. That's what it was. You know, uh, I wasn't a, a fan of a Kobe Bryant type player. I'm not saying I wasn't a fan of Kobe Bryant. I, was, I wasn't a fan of a Kobe Bryant type player. Well, who's another Kobe Bryant type player in your eyes? Uh, you know, anybody who, you know, is a volume shooter. Like, you know, there's certain I'm a I'm I'm more of a KD type player, efficiency. Mm-hmm. I'm more of uh, you know, if if you're gonna shoot, shoot to make it, not shoot because I'm open and or I have the power to shoot, so I'm gonna shoot every time I get it. No, if you're gonna uh if you're gonna shoot, you know, at least have make it high quality shots. So I like K D, I like Steph Curry, I like those guys because they, they take smart shots and they're the efficiency, efficiency is high. So I'm never a fan of a volume shooter. Like Allen Iverson. I like Allen Iverson. He had, his heart is as big, he's bigger than Shaq. Volume shooter. And I'm not saying I, I, I don't like Allen Iverson. If I had to start a fire, I wouldn't put him on my team. And I, I don't have nothing negative to say about Allen Iverson. I but, mean, would you say Jordan is a Kobe type player? No. 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 Why is that? Because the two of them are really. You know, smush together. I know, hate when smush people... together. <laughs> uh, you Unintended know, I, a lot I, of times. I, I, get I hate yeah. when people put, you know, they 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 compare. I can see that why you would compare Kobe to, to Mike and Mike to Kobe, but I, you know, wouldn't compare uh Michael Jordan to a Kobe Bryant or Kobe Bryant to a Michael Jordan. And there's two, there's very there's differences in their game. So Mike, they both were very high competitors. Um, but Mike, you know, wanted his teammates to be better. So he motivated his guys to be better. Well, right, because Jordan, you never actually got to play against Jordan, did I you? I did. You did? Yep. My first you're, year you're in the NBA, year. my first year in the NBA was his last. Right. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to figure out yeah. what the, the cutoff was. Um, what was it like to play against Jordan? Oh, man. It was because a, was that, was that the player that you were yeah. idolizing as a kid? I wanted to be like Meg when I grew up. Yeah. You know, uh, he was the reason why I actually wanted to make it to the NBA. Mm-hmm. So getting a chance to play against him was that was that was in itself a dream come true. Because I grew up, you know, six, seven, eight years old watching him on TV, and like that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be, and that's what I was in the gym practicing every day to be like Michael Jordan. I want to be at that level. I was in the gym every day, so to be able to actually not only play against him, but uh, not only to beat him, but to meet him, but to play against him in an NBA game 
Hmm. And this was Jordan with the Wizards. Yeah. Right. Did you ever hear the story between the little confrontation between uh, Jordan and Kobe? Gilbert Arenas told me the story. No. So what happened was when Jordan, well, Kobe always wanted to be better than Jordan. No, oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, he. That's why he went. Well, he went straight from high school into the league because he wanted to play against Jordan, so people wouldn't say, "Oh, well, you're good, but you never played against Jordan." Yeah, right. Okay. And then, you know his his number. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. He based it off Jordan's number. Yeah, you know, and so forth. And during this game, when the two of them played against each other, at the end of the game, Jordan like smacked him in the ass and said. You can wear my shoes, but you can't fill them. Mm, yeah, I heard that. And he said for the next two weeks, Kobe did not talk to anybody. He would go to practice and ignore all his teammates and just got into like this rage. Mm-hmm. And he said that when he played him the next time, Kobe just went ballistic, <laughs> just scored tons of points mm-hmm. on him. It was just just went crazy. Okay, but it was like a, the anger over yeah. Jordan trying to kind of like little man him basically. Yeah. So, according to you, mm-hmm. when Jordan played Kobe, uh, you know, Jordan won, mm-hmm. and then at the end of the game, I guess Kobe was wearing some Jordan 8s, uh-huh. and, uh, you know, Jordan smacked him on the butt and said, uh, you can wear the shoes, but you'll never fill them. Yeah. And then what happened next? Okay. <laughs> what happened next? So, so, what happened next is, so, I guess... During that time after Kobe got, so Kobe didn't say anything to anybody. So for like two weeks, they said Kobe was just mute. Like he didn't talk to his players and talk to his teammates. Just, it, he said he was in like focus mode. Like it was straight, like practice was just so intense, right? So the players like, the players were like, yo, is he mad at us? Like, did we do something to him? Mm-hmm. And then it was like, Phil was like, no, 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 no. Um, Jordan told him um, when we played him, uh, <laughs> you can wear the shoes, but you can never fill them. And it was like, Ooh. oh shit, when did we play them again? And it was like, yeah, we played them in a few days. Oh yeah, so I, I'm not even gonna stretch for that game because <laughs> <laughs> young fellas not passing us the ball. <laughs> and that's the game Kobe had like 55, 55 points. After that whole exchange with you and Kobe, they were saying that you intentionally ignored Kobe in terms of passing him the ball. Is that true or not? Not true. Okay, but you've heard this before. Yeah, you know what? I, what what was said was it was taken out of context. So what it was said was, um, beginning of beginning of the season, Phil Jackson, you know, you know, addresses the team and in, in the many meetings that we had. It was like, listen, Kobe's going to get his shots. We don't need to force him the ball because that's where a lot of our turnovers come from. And he kept reiterating this throughout the season. Listen, if Kobe's not open on one, two, don't you know the defense is defenses are geared to stop Kobe from getting the ball. Stop trying to force him the ball. That's where our turnovers come from. So if he's not open initially on a one two look, we go the other way and we and, and he'll rotate and we'll get him a, a pass some someplace else. Mm-hmm. So me, I'm following coach's orders. Kobe, Kobe, okay, no, nope, you're being denied. You're not open. I'm going this way. And I might have been the only player that did that, that stopped mm. forcing Kobe the ball. So that's what I would say. I said I stopped passing Kobe the ball. I No, though, it should have been I stopped forcing passes to Kobe because he wasn't open on the one, two, okay, now I'm going this way. Do you think Kobe took that a certain type of way? Of course no? he did. Okay, so he felt like you were purposely not well, giving course, you the ball. Of course. Even though Phil Jackson was telling you to do what you were actually doing. But it is what it is at that point. Mm-hmm. 